Wish you did things better in the past? Well, I wish I did. From not understanding what education really was about to not understanding why I wanted to marry, to getting married and not knowing its purpose. How about sex? How about money management? How about dealing with friends who try to intrude in your marriage? What about the effect an environment has on your future? And so many other things I wish I did better. Well, join me, your host, Theophilus Lamte. This is the help I needed. This and every Thursday at 7 p.m. GMT. Wonderful people, welcome to the maiden edition of the help that I needed. This is the Theophilus Lamte Ministries, and we want to say a very special welcome to all our first time viewers and those of you that, that's been with us all these years. We say, May the good Lord richly bless you. This is um, a program that God has designed for us, and by the special grace of God, we find ourselves to be the vessels that God wants to use. Is that the help that I needed. We know it's going to be a blessing to you, so you stick and stay with us till the end of the program. I would love to hear your comments. We would love to um, hear what you have to say, the things that you will send in, the questions, the messages, and all of that. It will help us to also learn because, I mean, life is a learning curve and no one knows it all. So as we share our views with you, we would also be very interested to hear the things that you also have to say concerning the topic that we are going to discuss. Today, we are starting off with what I call identity crisis. Yes, but before I start and I introduce my man of God that uh, I have with me in the studio today, I just want to say a quick prayer and then we can begin the program. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to bless you today. We say, may your name forever be praised. Thank you for a time like this. You predestined that it to happen just the way it is happening. Because of that, we say, take all the glory, honor, and adoration. Today, like never before, let souls be touched. Let the oppressed be set free. Let the yokes be broken off the shoulders of your people. We thank you for this opportunity that we are gathered here to study your word. Do what only you can do. Take us out of the picture and take all the glory. Anoint these lips of clay and let it be a blessing to your people. We pray all this in the worthy name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, viewers, once again. And like I said, this is the Theophilus Lamb Tape Ministries, and this is the maiden edition of the program dubbed The Help I Needed. Yes, so with me in the studio today is my very good friend, a pastor, a seasoned teacher of the Word of God. And I, I, I really want to say too much about him. I will just quickly want to um, allow him to come and introduce himself to you, and you will know who we are talking about. Um, my brother, you are welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, my brother. I am grateful for the opportunity. Um, my name is Pastor Ross Nikwekote. I'm the lead pastor of Calvary Palace Church based here in Ghana. I'm a Saman to be precise. I'm also a proud member of the Cold Network. And the last but not the least, I am a child of God. Thank you. He is definitely a child of God. And I like the way he keeps saying that I am a child of God. I mean, what other title can you have than to be a child of God? And is it not interesting that our topic today for discussion is actually identity crisis? So this is the help that I needed. And um, when I was growing up, I realized that there was a lot of things that was going on around my life I did not understand. And everything can be summed up together in what I'm calling my identity crisis. But I, I know that you out there that is listening to me today and listening to Pastor Ross today, we can all identify with the things that we battled during our days. We, we want to first start off by 
Um, actually, talking about identity for me, Pastor Ross, for me, if I'm talking about identity, I would say identity kind of defines my very self. It, it, it kind of um, tells me who I am, what I'm supposed to be, what I'm supposed to do. And above all, there is actually a purpose for me being created here on earth. I, I don't know, but um, I mean, if, if you can give us an idea of what you probably um, take home, um, if somebody talks about identity, then we can go into the nitty gritty of what identity is all about. Thank you once again. Um, when we talk about identity, it is one word um, which cuts across every everyday activity. I mean, you hold a passport, it defines your identity, you, you own certain um, cards just to identify yourself. So identity is one word we use every day. And simply, identity talks about who a person really is. Um, as we delve deeper, I, I'm sure we'll break through to certain areas. So identity basically is talking about who a person really is. Glory to Jesus. Identity is simply who a person is. And because we are believers, we want to establish um, these grounds before we actually take off. So I was reading the other day and I realized that, um, I mean, it's scattered all over the Bible that we were created in sin. So Sin came into the world and um, Adam and Eve were deceived into uh, making all of us actually sinful. So the very seed from which we came into being was sinful. But there was a time that something happened. So if, if I'm understanding what you are talking about, it means that when I was born, my identity was already perverted because I was conceived yeah. out of sin. And if it, that is true, then something else has to happen. So as I was reading my Bible, I, I came across um, this thing that Paul said, and it was very significant for me. I just want to share it with our viewers. So viewers, if you are if you are following us, you would probably want to um, note this and take some notes. And then at the end of the day, you also want to study like the church of Berea did back in the days of the apostles. You don't want to just take whatever we say. You want to also go and validate it and be sure that it is the seasoned word of God. So Paul um, told us in Colossians chapter 3, from the verse 1 to 3, and I want to read. It says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. This is where I like. It said, For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. It means that when we were created, we were out of, I mean, sinful seeds from Adam and Eve. That is the part that is talking about we were dead. But it, God has given us another opportunity. And through Jesus Christ, he's saying that now our life is hid in Christ. So, Pastor Ross, for me, if I have to talk about identity, I will say that my real identity as a believer is what is hid in Christ. But it didn't end there. He said it is hid with Christ in God. That means... I must be hidden in Christ, and Christ is also hidden in God. So I am actually a super subset. That means if you have to find me, you must first deal with God, find Jesus, and then come and get me. So this is a very powerful uh, identity for the believer. I, I don't know if you have anything to say con concerning that. I'm sure by now somebody out there is wondering, <laughs> what are these people talking about? <laughs> Okay, so let me try. Let me try to simplify this thing for um, you who's watching out there. Yeah. In in Jeremiah chapter one, mm. the verse five. Yes. Jeremiah chapter one, the mm. verse five. Mm. Bible says, "Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee." That's right. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Mm. Now I want you to listen to the words carefully. Mm. Before I formed thee, we talked about the mode. I knew thee. So clearly we understand that there is a clear difference between your form and then you. Wow. There is a you and then there is your form. Mm. Identity is the you. The form is the covering of the you. Wow. Why me asking, oh. what am I trying to say? Let me explain it further to you. Mm. 
as far as God is concerned, your identity is not your physical appearance, which okay. is your mode. Okay. So to God, your identity is not your height. Mm. To God, your identity is not your size. Mm. To God, your identity is not your stature. Your identity is who God really made you to be. But for man to be able to identify you and differentiate you from others, that is where the body size, the height, and all of those physics come to play. Mm. So if I ask you, do you know Akosia? Mm. It is likely you are going to ask me, is it the tall one or the short one? Mm. That is also a form of identity. Mm. But we need to separate the form from the you. Wow. That is why, as far as God is concerned, even if you are born as a disabled child, where you are you are blind in the eye or lame in the feet or your hand has withered, God still sees a complete person, though physically there is a challenge. Mm. So your identity has to do with two major parts. Identifying you by your form, that is your physical appearance, and then identify you by who you are as far as God himself is concerned. So God told Jeremiah that before I formed you, before I shaped you into who you look like today, I knew you. So there is a you and then there is your form. Okay. Everything everybody says about you has to do with your form. But it is only God who knows the real you. And as we continue, I know you'll get a better understanding of where this whole conversation will go. Wow. I, I, I told you when this teacher gets into his groove, is on another level, a form and you. <laughs> Today, I'm sure it's, it's going to be something else. So, I mean, for you out there who is watching this video right now or those of you that will watch sometime in the near future i want you to pay attention to exactly what pastor ross said he said there is a you and there is a form a form is your physical attributes and the you is what god actually designed you to be so don't let anybody define you by your form your definition should be the you pastor ross this brings me back to something that happened with me and i just wanted to share it i mean what can i say okay i think i grew up um, being a stammerer. So I wanted to say that I was born a stammerer, but obviously, I mean, when I was born, I wasn't there or I couldn't see um, how things um, were happening. But I grew up actually being a stammerer. And um, I realized that at some point, it started to affect my identity because then people were dealing with me based on what you just classified as my form and not my you. So my you is intrinsic, it's, it's inside of me, but my form was trying to shape how God has preordained me to be. So classic example, I, 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 I became a little timid most of the time because there were times when I didn't want to speak. I mean, the stammering was that bad. Those that knew me back in the days, like probably from my childhood up until like 10, 12 they could relate to the story I'm talking about. And it was so bad that I had to be beating my tie to even be able to speak one word. So people see me today and they can't believe that I, I actually have been stammering for so long because it doesn't show now. But I want to share this to encourage somebody out there, to encourage our parents out there or other people who are listening to us because we all have a part to play. And I just want to chip this. And I know in subsequent episodes, we will come up with the, the roles of external people in our life as to helping us to shape our identity. Can you imagine that my dad was a stammerer? My I have some uncles who stammer, my auntie, some of them stammer. And so it looked, it looked as if it was in the bloodline. And one day we will also go into that um, angle. But for the purposes of today's discussion, I remember my dad and my mom used to tell me that, you know what, when you are talking, take your time. Breathe in and out. And don't be in a haste to speak. And this was like magical therapy. So what you are seeing today is not what I used to be like um, before 12 years. 
I was a terrible stammerer and it was that bad that it affected me. It started to make me feel timid because when I go into the midst of people, because of the struggles I had with talking, I preferred not to talk. And unconsciously, it started building anger in me too because if the words are not able to come out properly, then I want to use action. So if you offend me and I cannot talk properly, I will end up throwing my fist. So I just wanted to chip in to just encourage somebody who is listening to us right now because sometimes people feel their situation is out of the world. If I used to be a terrible stammerer and today I am speaking like this and if I don't tell you this story, you can never believe I stammered before. So I just want to say thank you, my dad, to thank you to my mom for that little magical therapy they gave me. Just breathe in, take your time, calm down. And I realized that at, at, at some point in time, it, it started to impact me positively because that timidity which was hidden in my subconscious decided to eventually um fade off a little bit so i just wanted to pass this across i don't know if you also want to come in with um something else but i mean this just um by the way this example really um confirms what i just spoke about mm -hmm. um about your form and then the you That's what right. i want our viewers to also understand is the form is generic. Wow. And then the you is spiritual. Okay. Let me say it again. Mm. The form you take as a person is generic. Mm. And then the you is spiritual. The you is the God you, the God man mm. in you, the God himself you. But your form is a generic, something you get from your family. So you find out that somebody who is born into a family of tall people ends up becoming tall. Okay. You find somebody who is born into a family with, with I mean, big body, like the big size people. I mean, that is what also comes out. Mm. So the, 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 the form only comes to explain where you are coming from or the family you are linked to, which simply means your form is going to take on certain attributes based on the family you come from. Some families, I mean, you enter into some families and realize that everybody is putting on glasses. That's right. That's true. So although the real you, although the real you is not having eye challenges, but the form, which happens to be a generic something based on the family you are born in, comes with the defect that as you also grow up, you are also compelled to put on glasses. It doesn't mean there is a problem with you. It simply means you come from a particular family. And in that genes, this is what they deal with. Right. So you find people who are ashamed of their body size and they want to kill themselves to, to, to cut down on their weight. My sister, my brother, don't kill yourself. Mm. It is in your genes. Mm. That is how your family genes are. And there is nothing you can do about it. You don't need to be ashamed about it. You need to be proud of it because it separates you from every other person. Mm. Your height shouldn't come as a problem to you. Somebody say, I am too short. I wish I was taller. Somebody <laughs> says, I am too slim. I wish I had a little bit size. Yeah. Somebody says, I am too this. I am too that. It simply means everybody will come in different forms. Mm. But please, one thing is certain. You are not the form. Mm. You are you. Mm. And anytime God is speaking, he's speaking to you. Mm. And he's not speaking to your form. You realize that at some point in the work of Jesus Christ um, with his disciples, Bible said they met a young man who was blind. And Bible said he was blind from his birth. Okay. And they asked, who has sinned? Mm. And Jesus said, nobody has sinned. But he was born in that condition so that my glory will be seen. Mm. I am speaking to you out there. I don't know what challenge you are having with your body size, what challenge you are having with your form. But let me tell you the truth. For whichever form you are born with, I want you to know is for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Whether you are lame in your feet, whether your hand is withered, whether you are blind in one eye, whether you are a big size or a plus size, it doesn't matter because everything, as far as God is concerned, is going to work together for your good. Mm. Don't be ashamed of how you look mm. because it is still for the glory of God. Mm. Are you not surprised that every, every car comes with a different size Cars mm. comes in shapes and sizes. That's right. And depending on the assignment for the car and the shape and size the car takes, if you have this understanding, you realize that the assignment God has given to you also plays a role in the form in which you come. Mm. 
An articulated track is a car made to carry loads, sand, stones. And because of that kind of assignment, that car cannot be a luxurious car. Mm. Mm. And sometimes you need to appreciate that your identity is tied to your purpose. Mm, man of God, you are so preaching. what makes you proud? What makes you proud of your identity is your purpose. Mm. So he said, Before I formed you, I knew you and I sanctify you to what to become a prophet. Wow. So, in the wisdom of God, when he was planning you to be born here on it, he had a purpose in mind. So don't be ashamed of your body size because the purpose for which God has given you here on earth, if you don't, you don't come with that body size, you will have a challenge. Mm. 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 Everything is for the glory of God. Mm. Mm. Your confidence will only be found when you understand the purpose for which God created you. Hallelujah. I hope he's blessing you. Hallelujah. Man of God, in fact, you, you, are, you, are, you are blessing me. But just um, when you were talking about everything was created for his purpose, I just wanted to just um, chip this um, Bible verse in so that we would see exactly what is going on here. And that is John chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. I, I was having a Bible discussion with somebody and the explanation was so profound. And I mean, it was timely that you had to say that everything was um, created for his good. He said, John 3, John, I mean, John 1, chapter 3, verse 5. He said, God created everything through him. And nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created. And his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. What I am seeing here is that everything was created by God and for God and for his purpose. That is what Paul said in another um, part of his, his letters. But this one is what John is saying. John is saying that everything was created through him and nothing cre was created except through him. The word, which is Jesus Christ, as we go on further with our discussions, one day we will sit on what the Bible refers to as the word, which we all know it is Jesus Christ himself. So if I can paraphrase, he said, um, Jesus Christ gave life to everything that was created. So, um, Pastor Ross, it makes me understand that my life actually is Jesus Christ in me. So some people will say, Christ in me, the hope of glory. So if I can identify myself, that means Christ has come to live in me. So when we started, we were talking about what Colossians chapter 3 was saying, that you were dead. Now your life is hidden with Christ. So until we accept Christ into our life, we are just existing. Unfortunately, we are not living. I don't know if you want to uh, throw more light on this for the, the benefit of those of us um, who are new to this, this um, thing. You see, Bible says in Proverbs 23, verse 7, yes, sir. for as he thinketh in his heart, mm. so is he. Mm. The way you are brought up as a person has an effect on how you think. That's right. And your thinking then begins to give you an identity of yourself. Okay. But if there is a challenge with your upbringing, mm. it simply means your thinking will also be affected and then affect the way you see yourself as in your identity. Wow. The way out is getting to know who your creator is. Mm. Because mm. if you don't get to know who your creator is, it will not give you a clear picture of who you truly are. Mm. Like I said, I can use my car to carry loads from my house to a particular destination. Mm. The mm. fact that the car was able to carry the loads to that destination doesn't make the car a wood carrying car. Hey, speak to me, man of God. But necessity made me to use the car to carry the loads. Okay. That is why the police can stop me and say, you are using the right, you are using a car, 
but for the wrong purpose. That's right. And for most of us, because we have not encountered the manufacturer of our life, who is God, mm. we are doing certain things which looks good, which looks okay. Mm. But in the eyes of God, it is an abuse of who we are because we have not found out who we truly are. Wow. That is why on the journey of life, it looks like for you in particular, you struggle to get everything done. You struggle to get everything done. You struggle to get everything done. But there's somebody who is just cruising. And you keep asking yourself, are we not praying to the same God? (laughs) Yes, we are praying to the same God. Yes, we are serving the same God. Mm. But the difference between you and I is that I have discovered my purpose. I have discovered my God. I have discovered the source of my life. Mm. But you have not. That is why today I'm encouraging you that if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, don't let anybody deceive you. Mm. That is the true way to discovering your true identity. Mm. My brother, my sister, mm. school will not give you your identity. Yes, your parents will not be able to tell you identity. Your society will not be able to tell you identity. That is why there is still not fulfillment in your life. You think relocating to America is how you find your identity. You think relocating to London is how you find your identity. Yet you are in London and you still don't feel fulfilled. Mm. It is because that is not how to discover your identity Mm. your identity is hidden in christ until you come to the point of accepting jesus christ as your lord and personal savior you'll be like the car which is carrying goods but it is not meant to carry goods and it's just a matter of time the police enforcement is going to stop you one day and ask you why are you doing illegal transactions may god help you wherever you are to understand this Amen. I'm just laughing because I I like the analogies you give. I mean, it drums these things home because, I mean, back home where we come from in Africa, we deal with the police a lot. So I I understand exactly what you mean by they stopping you and telling you overload and everything. I like when messages are practical because we've grown in an era where it looks as if people or we are made to believe that the more mystical the message is, the more powerful it is. But, I mean, the gospel is supposed to be very simple. And, like, you are using day-to-day illustrations. And you know what? That is what exactly Jesus did. When Jesus came, Jesus was not um, giving so many mystical stuff. What he was using was what we call parables. Parables are um, heavenly, like, spiritual heavenly realities that you use um, physical things to bring home. So when he goes into the midst of businessmen, he will give a parable of merchants. When he goes around people who are um, farmers, he will talk about the sower who is sowing a seed. So I I like the way you drum home your messages and you make it very applicable to our daily activities. We can resonate with it every now and then. But something that actually um, stuck with me when you were talking about the identity, I also realized that Most of us have accepted Christ, but we are not working on our new identity. What what, what am I trying to say? Um, There is a very popular um, psychologist back in the, I think, the 18th. His name um, is Eric Erickson. And he came up with, he actually came up with, the, he coined the, the, the name identity crisis because he did a lot of study about human nature and how we go through all these identity crises. And he, he came up with a, a study which actually was designed to see that identity crisis goes through different developmental stages. And he combined what we call psychological um, lifestyle of a human being and the social life of a human being. So you see that when we do a careful study of that, everything actually is in the Bible. So in our subsequent episodes, when we take characters um, from the Bible and we are trying to expand on their identity, all these things that these um, psychologists and scientists are now discovering was already there in the Bible. So you see, that's why we we call it discovery. Discovery is not creating it. It's something that is there that you are now seeing. So all these things that we are seeing used to be there. And back to my point, I'm trying to say that we need to work on our new identity because this psychologist... Um, Eric Erickson is saying that identity crises are formed or identity is actually a combination of so many things. Your values, 
the, the kind of things you are exposed to, experiences you have, and a whole lot of things happen. So when these things happen, it is imprinted on your subconscious one way or the other. So that is why this part that I'm coming to talk about now, which is um, Romans chapter 12. Paul, I mean, it's, it's a very important thing that is not just about knowing that I have accepted Christ and that is it. So Bible makes us to understand that, work it out. That means there is something you need to do. It's progressive. And Paul makes it very clear here in Romans chapter 12. I'm reading from the, um, I think, from the verse 2. He said, do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, is good, pleasing, and perfect will. You see, so Paul is making us understand that because of our sinful nature that we were born, there is already a pattern in our mind which is not godly. And that is what the world is teaching us today. So Paul is saying emphatically here that don't conform. Conforming means simply to assume the shape of something. So you are conforming to the patterns of the world means you are just trying to look like what the world is saying you should look like. And my brother, just yesterday, we were talking to a cousin of ours and we were just doing a survey based on this um, study. And you would not believe, like she said something that was so profound. She said, most of the young ones are either on the process of identifying who they are or don't even know that they have an identity to discover. Because social media, which is the world now that they are conforming to, has told them that your identity is to become a um, social media influencer. So everybody is trying to do something on either TikTok, Facebook, or YouTube. And she said something that was funny. He said, if you see your man selling bread, tomorrow morning you also want to learn how to bake bread because you have little skills in baking. But your identity is not what your man is doing. So we are in a generation of copycats. But yeah. Paul is telling us that when you accept Christ, now the old parts, the patterns that you have, the values that have caused your old identity, the experiences that you've had and the kind of things you've gone through that has shaped your old identity, he's saying that be transformed. Transform means that you are changing your shape into something else. So the believer yeah. needs to understand that we cannot conform to what the world is teaching us. So the world is saying that to make money, you have to expose yourself on social media. So all our young ones who are supposed to be the heritage of our, our country, the future leaders, are all following what is trending. And what is trending is conforming to the world. Eventually, we are producing uh, grown-ups who don't have any leadership um, uh, qualities. So what is our generation going to be? You that you are listening to me right now. I mean, we've all been there. I've, we are, we've had dangerous identity crises. These are some of the things that we battled. At a point in my life, all I was doing was just what that particular um, situation wanted me to actually be like. I typically grew up in a compound house. Okay? So you can imagine the kind of things that um, I experienced growing up. This auntie is saying that this one is saying this. You are confused. I go to secondary school too, and there is a whole lot of things. So then I begin to conform to what is happening during secondary school. So I have, I have never been transformed by the thing here is the transformation of uh, the transformation that we are talking about, which is renewing your mind. What do you renew your mind with? The word of God. And the word of God is Jesus Christ, as Pastor Ross has already said. The more of Jesus you have, the more of light you have. So the life of Christ is not the air you breathe. The life of Christ is the light that you give outside there. Because trust me, you would agree with me, listeners, that the world is in abject darkness. It is only light. That Bible makes us understand uh, in John that the darkness cannot comprehend. So wherever you find yourself, you must give off that light, which is the life of Christ in you. Else darkness will forever dominate this world. But may God forbid that as you are listening to us right now, there will be a, a renewal of your mind because you are going to make it a habit, a character that henceforth you are going to make the study of God's word a heartbeat. It's going to be a burden that is going to be on you that you are going to deliberately and diligently study to help yourself get transformed. Else, you can come to Christ 
and you still have that old mentality. Is it not interesting that the um, Israelites came out of Egypt, but Egypt was still in them? They were still asking for things that they used to eat when they were in Egypt. So most of us young people, and I have been there, I was born, okay, let me not mention the, the, the church that I used to go just for the sake of um, keeping the, the, I mean, the name uh, private. But I, I was born and I was going to church, and I, I used to think that I was a believer, but I was doing everything that the world would um, ask me to do. So the fornication was a normal daily activity because you will fornicate and go to church and nothing shows. So then I was fornicating and I was thinking that, oh, it is normal because the world has taught us that fornication is normal. So when you have a girlfriend, sleeping with your girlfriend is normal because we had conformed to the world. Although we have accepted Christ as our Lord and personal savior, but the light was not shining in us. The light was not shining in us. And the other day, I was listening to um, Elder Mark Joris. He was having a program, and he said something. He said, believers nowadays have become light, like the light bulb that is not shining. So the essence of the bulb is not for decoration. It's so that it will give light. So all my days from I was born just before I got to 30 years, I was just a light bulb. But the real essence of my existence, which is to give light, was missing. And I know you can relate to what I'm talking about. That's why you can have choristers who are singing every now and then, and yet still they are living in sin. You can have even men of God who are preaching powerfully on the altar, yet still their life is, is, is fueled with soulish desires. It is our prayer today that as these teachings are going on, the Spirit of God will rest upon these words. It will not just be um, cognitive skills. Paul said we don't speak eloquently. But we skill with the power. Pastor Ross, I, I, I can feel that you are already um, fired up to tell us something. I, I, I mean, kindly feel free and, and give us some more revelations on what I'm talking about. You know, this then drums home the place of parents. Mm, talk to me. Because when a child is born, the child is born to a man and a woman. That's right. Who are supposedly supposed to be the father and the mother. Mm. And I think the, 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 the weight of parenting has not been drummed very well into the ears of a lot of Christian homes. So mm. we don't see the weight of what we carry. That's true. Now, in the account we read about Jeremiah... Mm. Bible says, before I formed you, I knew you and I had ordained you to be a prophet to the nations, mm. which means the destiny of Jeremiah has been defined already in God. Mm. But let's just make it practical in our home. Yes, sir. Assuming Jeremiah was born into a home where his father is in the military and the mother is a medical doctor you and I will agree with me that the chances that Jeremiah will be raised to be in the military or raised to become a medical doctor is very, very high. Mm. We as parents have decided to raise children to work in our state, but that was not the instruction God gave us. That is why a lot of people are having identity crisis because parents are not living up to expectation. Wow. If you are a parent listening to me, please hear the word of God. Mm. The scripture says parents should raise their children in the way they are supposed to go. Mm. Your primary responsibility as a mother, your primary responsibility as a father is not to raise a medical doctor. It's not to raise a lawyer. Talk it's to not to raise an architect. Man of God, it's you not are to raise to a scientist. That's right. You are supposed to raise a child in the ways of God. In the ways of if God. you succeed in raising an architect who doesn't know God, you have failed miserably. My goodness. If you succeed in raising your child to become a medical doctor, but he doesn't know Jesus, you have failed miserably. Wow. If you succeed in raising your child, to become a politician and he doesn't know God, you have failed miserably as a parent. Mm. Mm. 
Mm. That is why it is very important that as parents, we are in constant chat touch with God because God has the defined destiny for every child that is giving birth to. Hallelujah. And because we don't play our roles very well, we end up messing up the psychology of our children. Mm. And so they grow up and they are finding it very difficult to fit in because they became what daddy wanted them to become. Mm. And not mm. what God wants them to become. My God. So often, after they have become what daddy wants them to become, they probably have attained the age of 27 into their 30s. Mm. And they now have to battle to now find who they are by themselves. And if God doesn't come in, they will get to find their, their own reading by the age 30, 35 to 38. Mm. Before they will get to know God to find out who they really are, they are in their old age. Wow. So I want to caution every parent who is watching us now. Mm. That child that has been given to you is not to be raised the way you want to raise the child, Jeez. but to raise the child in the fear of God. Mm. Every child that finds the fear of God in the beginning, like the prophet Samuel, will not miss his identity as he grows up. May God help you as a parent. May God help you as a father. May God help you as an aunt. May God help you as an uncle. May God help you as a mother to be able to raise that child that God has given you in the fear of the Lord. Jesus Christ is the way. And when we lay the right foundation for our children in the beginning, I can tell you for a fact, they will not miss their identity as they grow up. When we lay the foundation for our children right from the beginning, um, as you just said that, you know, something just came into my mind and I wanted you to just um, help us with um, further clarifications based on what you said. Somebody is, 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 is going to ask, teach the child the way they should go and when they grow, they will not depart from it. Lay the foundation from the beginning. Can, can you, can you, can you, help us like elaborate because i mean personally with me i know a lot of things that happened during my childhood um years and probably when you throw more light on what you are um saying that parents should do i'll be able to connect one or two other things and i'm sure our viewers are eager to see some of the scenarios that you are going to give so can you kindly just just throw some more light on what, what you just said and uh, i'll see if, if it will be able to ring something in in, in, my, in my mind Okay, so as a parent, your child wakes up in the morning. Mm. The first thing you do is to pray with the child. The basic prayers we all said, okay. the Lord's Prayer, wow. our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You, 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 you keep reciting these things and you, are, you, you might not know what you are doing, mm. but you are sowing a seed into the life of the child. When the child dresses up and is about to have his breakfast, Pray with the child mm. and make sure mm. every time you are starting your prayer, you start in the name of Jesus and say whatever prayer you have to pray. When the child is ready to go to school, lay hands on that child and pray again in the name of Jesus. As you go to school today, whatever you are taught, may you have understanding. May the spirit of God help you and open your ears and open your eyes to grasp everything you are taught in school and then send off the child to school. When the child returns from school, don't ask the child first, how was school? Lay hands on the child and say, in the name of Jesus, I thank God that you have returned alive. I am grateful that today, everything you have been taught, you understood. You will do well in Jesus' mighty name. Then continue with your conversation. When your child falls ill, the first thing you do is not to call the medical doctor. Lay hands on the child and declare that in the name of Jesus, I declare that you are healed. Receive strength, receive life in Jesus' mighty name. And then continue. Over the period, the child will be asking you, Mommy, who is Jesus? That's right. That's true. Daddy, who is Jesus? Mm. Every time in the name of Jesus, every time in the name of Jesus, who is this Jesus at all? Mm. Guess what? This is what is going to lead the conversation. Wow. But here you are. When the child wakes up, the child does everything. You just drop off the child and tell the child, be a good girl or be a good boy. <laughs> How does a child become a good girl? How does he become a good boy? It takes certain things for the child to become a good boy. That's true. And I have this inscription in my house which mm. says, children may close their ears 
to advice, mm. but their eyes are always opened to examples. Hallelujah. Let me say it again. Mm. Children may close their ears to advice, but their eyes are always open to example. Mm. Don't get tired mentioning Jesus in your home. Mm. Even if you mistakenly crash your plate, mm. say in the name of Jesus. Oh, wow. Even if you mistakenly hit your head against the wall, say in the name of Jesus. Just make sure Jesus is a common factor, a common name in your home. Mm. And this is how the conversation begins. You'll be amazed that your children, at the least thing, they will say in the name of Jesus. That's at the least thing, they will say in the name of Jesus. And don't forget, as believers, we know that at the mention of the name Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Mm. Even if the situation doesn't demand for it, by just mentioning the name Jesus, authority has been released and God is going to take over that situation. Mm. You have laid a good foundation for your child. Mm. Let me tell you, it is far better than taking your child to Oxford University. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Pastor Ross, you know, as you were talking about these things, it, it took me back to my very young age. Like I said, I grew up in a, a typical compound house. So I didn't get the kind of things that you are talking about now. Like, you know, Every little thing. Hey, hey, it's not like it's pieces. not like I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it either. <laughs> <laughs> so we are in fact being the help that we we, we needed. Hallelujah exactly. to Jesus. <laughs> so for me, what I, what what happened in my setup was these were not things. But my mom used to be a very staunch church goer, right? She was in the mm. choir and everything. So what I kept seeing, like you said, I will see her every morning before she goes to work. She has this wardrobe with her clothes she goes to stand in front and she will pray even up to today she still does that and she's over 60 years so like you said that picture is still with me so then i i will keep asking like what is she doing what is she doing and i realized that there is a god that she's giving her life to every single morning you yeah. see so what you just said is so true and it's so real but i think yeah. if the parents can be more intentional I mean, if we can yeah. be more intentional, I mean, parents that are listening to us right now, it's about the intentionality of it. Sometimes, don't yeah. be just casually doing it once a while. If you are more yeah. deliberate about doing it, like I'm saying, my mom was praying um, herself every morning before she goes to work. But she wasn't praying with us uh. together as the children. So when you were talking about it, if probably she was praying with us together as children before we go to school, when we come back, before we eat, when we are bathing, when we are sick, we would have picked up these things automatically. Like I would get to understand that if I'm not feeling well, the first point of call is to pray. But I didn't have some of yeah. these things. But I, I still saw my mom praying every day before she was going to work. And I've been able to remember this all my life. So it's very important that as young parents and as older parents that are watching and listening to us today to be more intentional because all these things go to kind of form the transformation that the children that we need in our minds because our minds are supposed to be renewed. And if they will be yeah. renewed, these are the kind of things that are about to be written on them. When you yeah. conform to and the I'm system, really... Yes, yes, go on. Children, children like to ask questions. At those stages, they ask a lot of questions. Okay. And sometimes, because we have not led the conversation, they come and ask us unnecessary questions. Unnecessary. <laughs> unnecessary questions. So, so when you begin to do these things with them, they become curious. As mm. children, naturally, they become curious. And they begin to question you. Mm. Who is Jesus? Okay. And you tell them, this is Jesus. When they go to school, they'll go and say, hmm, guess what mommy said today? He said, Jesus is the son of God. And he says, oh, mommy, don't you, why your mother? Mom, Jesus is not the son of God. Jesus is one, somebody they have been praying to. Ah, even my father does the same thing, though. And before I realize, a whole conversation is going on. Your child will come back and tell you, ah, mommy, I told my friend in school, Jesus is the son of God. And he said, the mother said it is not true. Mm. Guess what? All of a sudden, you have changed the conversation mm. of your child. Wow. But because we don't do it, we, 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 our children return from school and sometimes they return and all they have learned are insults mm. from another person mm. in school. Mm. 
So even my boys, when I'm going to whip them, I whack them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to beat you today. You know? And <laughs> it also gives them the impression that the Jesus we serve is a disciplinary Jesus. Wow. Don't forget, Bible says, I like this one. foolishness, mm. foolishness mm. is in the heart of a child. Right. But it takes the rod of correction. And don't forget, Jesus Christ is the rod of correction. That's true. So when I watch you in the name of Jesus, I am wiping away foolishness. Don't forget, if any man lacks wisdom, he should go to God and ask. That's so true. as I work you, I'm working wisdom into your system. Amen. That is why I work my children in the name of Jesus. So of we, Jesus. we need to be conscious about this Jesus. You see, Jesus is the solution to every problem in your home. Mm. Jesus is the solution to every identity crisis you have. Jesus is the solution. Reducing your weight size, reducing the size of your nose, reducing the size of your arms, reducing the size of your hips, reducing everything, doing everything is not the solution. Mm. The solution is Jesus. Trust me, you will find joy like never before if you encounter this jesus and we have to make jesus known in our homes wow i mean it's, it's i like i like what you said you work the wisdom of christ into them in the name into of the jesus. child hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> this is so beautiful this is so beautiful and so for me i think um it, a lot of things actually play a part in um our developmental stages as, as 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 children and subsequently in our future episodes we would deliberately take sections of them and go deeper into them for the benefit of um our distinguished um viewers this is the theophilus lamte ministries just subscribe send a link to somebody you don't know who it will be a blessing to all the necessary um informations are scrolling on your screen right now and our details are there we would love to hear from you we would love to hear what you are saying we would like we would like to hear your life challenges the the crisis that you had the identity issues that you also had and together it will help our study and we will not be ordinary people or will not just live life as if life is um you know sometimes we over spiritualize life as if we are walking on the moon but i can tell you the spiritual side is there but we need also to have knowledge some of us are walking and we don't want to grow in knowledge bible said for lack of knowledge my people perish so without the knowledge distraction is inevitable so i'm so excited that Pastor Ross is helping us today to open this thing up. Pastor Ross, you know, we've, we've not really gotten into the identity crisis. It seems as if today we are just hovering around <laughs> identity. So for a certainty, there must be a part two to this one because we must make time to go into the identity crisis itself. Because simply, I mean, let's just, just use the few minutes that we have before we round up just to explain to them what the crisis is. For, for me, identity crisis is when you get into like um that that state that, that point of your life of uncertainty or confusion in the in the individual's life you don't really know what you are about you don't know what you're supposed to do and like you rightly said when you don't know the purpose you run at everything that comes your way so for me that is what i define as as identity crisis i don't know if you would want to go into that direction a little bit before yes um we will continue oh yes yes i mean in in identity crisis has a lot to do with a confused person, a, a depressed person, a worried person, you are totally out of place, basically. A, a clear picture of identity crisis is somebody who has missed his way going somewhere. I mean, you are totally lost. And at that moment, you are at the mercy of anyone who comes to say, this is where you are supposed to turn. This wow. is where you are supposed to turn. And let me tell you one truth. Let me tell you one truth. The discovery of who you really are mm. will set you on the path of shining, will set you on the path of success, mm. will set you on the path of fulfillment. And I'm talking about true fulfillment. Mm. I know of people who have lived all their lives uh, as accountants okay. and later realized that their real joy and fulfillment was in fashion wow. and as i'm talking right now there's somebody 
who is locked up in one profession. You go to work every day and you are receiving huge sum of money as your salary, but something inside you is not happy. Yes, you right. just cannot explain. Yes. There is money. There are allowances. There are privileges and all of that one. Everybody is hailing you that you have gotten your dream job, but something inside you is not happy. Yes. And I'm sure right there you are, you are like, you want to enter into catering. And when you tell them you want to enter into catering, everyone will be like, what is wrong with you? My brother, my sister, for true fulfillment is in discovering your identity. Other than that, all you have done has lived the life of the man behind the mask. It is time to take off the veil. It is time to take off the mask and discover who you truly are. When you discover yourself, you'll be amazed the number of times you'll be laughing through the day. When you discover who you truly are, you'll be amazed the joy that will be bubbling in your heart. When you discover who you truly are, you just can't wait to see the light of another day and jump to what God has laid on your heart. So yes, somebody who hasn't discovered his true identity is living a confused and a miserable life. May God help you so that you will discover who your identity really is. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I was I, I was fortunate to be talking to one of my sisters um, this afternoon before we actually had the program. And we also discovered that, you see, based on the things that we are reading, the research we are making on this um, identity crisis thing, I also discovered that different phases of life evolve another side of our identity. But as I was, ex I was talking to her today, I... I, I think one thing that we came to a conclusion is that the different phases of life is not supposed to change your identity. It's supposed to um, actually make it better or make it more um, in, in, in agreement with what God ordained it to be. So somebody's identity is based on the fact that he's single now. But the moment he or she marries, the identity changes. Because now your, your, the faces of life are changing your identity, which is not supposed to be the case. That is people who are going through identity crisis. And we've all been there. My yeah. identity prior to um, going to senior high school was different. When I got to secondary school, senior high school, it was different. When I entered the university, it was different. When I started working, it was different. I only discovered my true identity in Christ just when I married. And this is the greatest miracle for me because knowing where I come from and knowing my background, if God had not intervened at that time, I would not be seated in front of you telling you these things that I'm talking to you about. That was pure grace and mercy. But beloved that is listening to me, I don't want you to go through the situation I went through. I don't want you to gamble with your life way up until marriage. Everything could go wrong. And for me sitting here, and well composed and talking to you and even sharing these things to you it's a pure miracle i personally i don't i don't need to see a cripple walk for me to see a miracle my life is a miracle because if i'm telling you that i did not know my identity till i married mm -hmm. then ask yourself what mindset or mind frame did i even go into marriage with but if jesus tarries and god permits one of the topics we will deal strongly is what I needed to know before I married. And we will talk about a whole lot of things that identity is masked into. But I'm just sharing my story with you today just so that somebody will be encouraged. I'm sharing my testimony with you today to see that it is not over. Maybe you are at the stage of senior high school and you still not discovered yourself. It is still never too late. Like Pastor Ross said, if you can accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And, and I'll give him the opportunity to lead somebody to Christ before we wrap up the program. Because it's very important. Tomorrow is promised no man. We can't gamble with procrastination any longer. If it must be done, it must be done today. And I am more than convinced that you out there, my brother, my sister, my mom, my dad. And this program is not necessarily for the young ones. It cuts across. Because you see Pastor Ross talking about 
parents in there, you see everybody has a role to play. The community is involved. So it is a beautiful opportunity that you would take this up, this privilege you have now. Nobody knows what will happen tomorrow. If you go and lay your head on your bed, we can't guarantee what will happen tomorrow. It is by pure grace and mercy. So it took me well almost about 30 years to understand my identity in Christ. Can you imagine what has gone wrong? And can you imagine the things that I had to unlearn because of the problem I had caused for myself? Can I say myself? Well, yes, in and out, I can say myself. But at the end of the day, I had opportunities and I didn't take it. And one of the classic opportunities I had was that I had an uncle who was living in the community and he was a pastor. And he would organize Sunday Bible studies for all the children in the area. And me, for one, I know how to hide under bed very well. If you grew up in my generation, you understand that movies were not common. And I loved movies. So those days, they show movie at a particular time on Sunday. And I don't know why my uncle did that. That one time movie in a week, that time is when he also wants to have his Bible study. And I cannot have that. So they will go from room to room and look for everybody. So I mastered the art of hiding under a bed. To the point that I would arrange the shoes in front of me so that you would think everything is in order. I was still there. And this was some of the crisis I had. So I went to secondary school not knowing my identity. Friends invited me to SU. And I had to literally run away because I didn't know my identity is only functional in Christ. So beloved, I don't want you to take um, this opportunity for granted at all. I just want to allow Pastor Ross this few minutes to feel free as the Spirit of God will, 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 will lead them, to encourage somebody, to give somebody an opportunity to accept Christ. If today is all they have, Pastor Ross, they are all yours. For you listening to us this present time, I want you to know that it is in the plan of God for you to be listening to us right now. And I want you to have this understanding that there is no problem with your body size. There is no problem with your skin color. There is no problem with your height. There is no problem with you. The only challenge there is, is because you have not discovered who your source is, which is Jesus Christ. And all I want to do with you is to offer you the opportunity to accept him now as your Lord and personal savior. The joy we have today, the happiness we have today, the fulfillment we have today is because we accepted him. And I can guarantee you that as you also accept him today, you will find that same joy, that same fulfillment in your life. If you want to do that, please say this short prayer after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity today to hear your word through this medium. I am grateful that today is my day of transformation. Today, I confess you as my Lord and personal Savior. I pray that, Lord, you will come into my heart and take your rightful place. Reveal yourself to me. Show me who I'm supposed to be. May my heart continually yearn for you, and may I know you better. Come into my heart, live within me, and make my life better. My brother, my sister, you have just done the right thing. And I can assure you that beginning from now, your life will never be the same. Watch on the screen. There are numbers going out there. There are email addresses. Get in touch with us and we're ready to guide you. We'll be ready to provide you any form of counseling you need to enrich your work with God. May God richly bless you. And I hope you tune in next time we meet and God watch over your life. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Ross. I, I am super excited in my spirit. And um, I, I know God is already doing wonders with, um, I mean, what he has laid on our heart to do. We just want to be the help that we needed. And all we are trying to do is, as, as we keep um, sharing our experiences, as we use the Bible to study, God in his own might and power will reach you wherever you are. Pastor Ross rightly said, you have the contacts on the screen, whichever 
one of them is applicable to you, feel free, get in touch. And by God's grace and mercy, we will be able to um, encourage you, share um, further testimonies and probably, um, I mean, give you any sort of help that um, God will lead us to give you so that we would all grow into the full stature of Christ. Beloved, um, time runs really quickly when you are enjoying yourself. It's, it's, it's rather unfortunate that our time is fast spent. But like I promised you, somewhere in the middle of the program, we definitely have to get a part two of the um, identity crisis because we focused more on the identity. But next week, if Jesus tarries and God permits, we would go more into the crisis. I shared my little experience from my transition from um, being a young man into secondary school where I still didn't pick up the opportunities that were afforded to me right at my doorstep. And I know you listening to me. Most of you can relate to what I'm talking about. But I, I mean, I regretted it because it took me a, a very hard knock for me to come to the full realization of my identity and subsequently we would be able to dive more deep into our lives for the benefit of you uh, viewers. This is um, the help that I needed. This is the maiden edition. This is the episode one. We focused on identity crisis. We, we talked about identity. We went into a little bit of identity crisis. What we are trying to bring to you today as emphasis is that the believer's life starts with Jesus Christ. The moment Jesus Christ comes to live in your life, you will find purpose because your purpose is hidden in Christ. Like I already read to you, he said, our life is with Christ in God. So until you journey into that place in Christ, unfortunately, you are only existing. You are not living. And the life of Christ is the light of man. When Jesus Christ comes into your life, the evidence that you've received Christ is that we will see light coming out of you. And it's not enough to receive him. You must also grow by renewing your mind. That is, you need to stay with the Bible. The Bible is the manual for life. When you stay with the manual of life, it will help you to appreciate the fact that that is how things are done. This is the code. This is the procedure. And that is how we will become better people in the days to come. I would also allow Pastor Ross to say hello and greet a few people, but I'm pretty confident that um, you've been able to. Now, um, the questions that you've been battling with and somebody will ask you, who are you? The moment you begin to think of somebody asking, uh, who are you? What do you mean? You you have an identity crisis. I, I used to be there. I have been there. That I will take for, I mean, like the whole day to find out what answer I need to give. But the answer to who are you is pretty straightforward, you see. And we said your the you does not change. It's the form that changes. So when you are asked who are you and you are still dealing with the form, you've missed your identity. It's not been so rosy for me, sincerely, for not knowing my identity all these years. But thank God that I didn't die in my identity crisis. I don't want you to die in your identity crisis. Take advantage of um, what is going on at the moment, and we know that it will be a blessing um, to you. Pastor Ross, you just want to um, say your final words, and then we can wrap up for today, sir. Your life is not over. Today offers you an opportunity to even start it all over again. And this time around, you are starting on the right footing, which is knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. I want you to be encouraged because you have made the best decision of your life. And I know definitely we will see you at the top and your testimony will be one that we'll be sharing next time on this program. God bless you for tuning in and we are blessed and really, really blessed to have you as part of this great show. Hopefully we will meet again, God willing, next week. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much, um, Pastor Ross, for making time out of your very busy schedule to help us with these um, teachings today. And believers, all too soon, this is how we 
wrap up the program for today. We we appreciate the fact that you made time to stay with us. Send us your comments. Send us your questions. Email us. I mean, send us WhatsApp. Whichever one is is com uh, I mean is convenient for you. We would really love to hear from you. We would really love to hear the challenges you are going through. And we know that God will help us to bring you um, tailored teachings based on that. Next week we are coming to you with the part two of identity crisis, where we will focus more on the identity crisis bit than the identity itself because today we've been able to establish what identity is where your identity is and how to develop it so god willing as we meet here again next week is going to be a beautiful program may you continually stay under the umbrella and the shadow of the lord almighty and take advantage of the word of god that comes to you the word of god is not your right it's a privilege and whatever is a privilege you must accord it that necessary respect and we know that your lives will never be the same again this has been um the help i needed with your host theophilus lamte till we meet again next week it is bye bye for now and be safe wish you did things better in the past well i wish i did from not understanding what education really was about to not understanding why I wanted to marry, to getting married and not knowing its purpose. How about sex? How about money management? How about dealing with friends who try to intrude in your marriage? What about the effect an environment has on your future? And so many other things I wish I did better. Well, join me, your host, Theophilus Lamte. This is the help I needed. This and every Thursday at 7 p.m. GMT.